Let's go shopping at Ikea, see what we can find to hack and do beautiful high-end Christmas decor. Right out of the gate, these trees are super adorable. I think I may try to find those because aren't they cute with the baskets? So I'm gonna skip upstairs today and go straight to the marketplace. I always gotta stop in the pillow section. Now I actually bought these fur ones last year and put them on my bed. They are so cute and look so wintry and cozy. But they also down here have them in a kind of a brown color. That's enticing me this year, maybe for my living room or bedroom, who knows. So they have red pillow covers. I have a hack for this that I did last year. Um, so I will link that below and you can check it out because it's super easy and a super cute and fun hack. And what about these Kelly green pillow covers here? Maybe we should call it Christmas green because I think that they would be really cute. I don't have a specific idea for it, but I'm thinking on it. It's so cute that I think they're out because I cannot seem to find them anywhere. So um, maybe I'll run across it, but I, it would have been really fun to come up with something for that. I'm loving all the fur. And as you can see, let me see, let me show you this. This blanket is like 50% off, originally $59.99 and it's now $29.99. How cute is this? I don't know if it will match what I've got going on, but it is super, super cute and would look great if you have grays in your home. And actually, while we are in the throw section, this is actually a really great way to cozy up your home for the holidays is finding a really fun throw blanket that matches your decor. They've got a ton of options here. They're usually pretty affordable. And so, oh, look at this one. Look at this Christmas red knit one. Isn't that so cute? I'm not even doing Christmas red for my color scheme this year, but that is adorable. So definitely check that out. $24.99. So that's a good price. It's beginning to look like all my wishes. There's no place like gnome. <laughs> So time to have a merry holiday. Again with the fur. I'm not sure. I've got some my wheels spinning for this, but maybe another time. I don't know. Bring it here. I guess that spring and summer, they're all fine. But I've been waiting for the season that's mine. So let it come. Yeah, I think these are fire pits. They're very cute. I missed them this summer. How adorable is that? These baskets are really cute, but I think we could find a better deal at Home Goods, honestly. There's a lot of good prices at IKEA, but sometimes they're a little more than I think they should be. I have to show you what I just found. <laughs> It's Polar Bear. Now, if any of you have been watching my channel for a while, you know that my baby brother watches this channel. It's not his type of thing, but he loves his sister, and I would totally get this for him if he lived closer. So instead, everybody say hi to him in the comments. Say hi, Polar Bear. <laughs> and Christmas is my favorite time of year. Love you, Neil. You will find most of the Christmas decor is really close to the register, so this is where it's going to be stocked pretty heavy, and that goes for most of their seasonal stuff. I've been busy decking the halls, I've been kind to big and small, and now it's time to have a merry holiday. What a feeling when it's time for Christmas. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it here. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it here. Okay, I'm definitely gonna need these. I have an idea for them. These are approved for indoor outdoor, and a lot of them are only approved for indoor, so we're gonna get these. 
trees. Oh my goodness, I just found the boxes for those trees and look, they are on sale for 36. That's a big discount, so I'm super excited. Pottery Barn has a very, very similar version to this, $129. Here is $49.99, so if you're looking for something like that, this is definitely the direction I would steer you in. I was really hoping to find these because I actually have an idea for these beautiful dishes. They have a little green trim on them, and I've got some fun ideas for this. Now, I have a ton of wreaths like this, but I thought this one was cute. So if you're looking for one, it's super cute. I believe it lights up because it has a battery pack. You can notice that up there. But I just have so many that I don't need something like that right now. All right, that's it for me today. I'm gonna go check out and then we're gonna get to the hacks. So we are back from shopping and I feel pretty good about the finds that I came up with. Sometimes it's slim pickings because I go a little bit too early, but this time I think they had everything out. There was not one thing that I had looked up on the website that wasn't there. But for those of you who are not near an Ikea, I hope you still stick with me because I think you can take the ideas and principles and transfer them into other DIYs. And I'm also gonna be using a couple of new techniques that I wanted to share with you. So stick with me, cause you might learn something even if you don't have an Ikea near you. So this first DIY I'm really excited about. It's very, very simple and it's really more of an idea. It's, there's nothing really too terribly complicated with this. And that is taking those trees that I thought I was gonna pay $50 for, but they were on sale for $36 for a five foot tall tree. I thought it was a great deal. So all I did was unbox it and just section by section, put it together and fluff out all of the branches. I just did this in the kitchen because we're gonna be taking them outside here in just a second. And so I just fluffed them up and got it looking good. I put the base on it with the stand legs that come with it. We're not gonna use those because I have have a specific location for it and where I want to put it adding the legs are just always too big it never really works out so here is what I came up with is once I got it all fluffed and everything I went out and found some scrap wood in a piece that would fit inside my pots on my front porch. We needed to stabilize the tree without shoving it into our dirt. You could do that, but I tested it out and it, it wasn't as stable as I wanted. Maybe if I had gone and got some rocks and done it that way. So keep that in mind if you don't want to do the wood part. The way I did it really stabilized it and I I think it turns out really cute. So what I did is I took my scrap pieces of wood and took some screws that would be weather safe and screwed them in, in between, like where you slide the leg up right there, because that way we don't damage the base. If I ever wanted to use it with the legs again, it will still be okay because the screw just screwed right in and it didn't damage it in any way. So this is really good to have a second person to kind of stabilize the tree at the top while you're doing it. But I did one of them all by myself. So you can get it done by yourself. It's just a little bit of a balancing act. So wherever there's a leg, you screw in a screw on a diagonal and when you do it on all four parts it will stabilize the tree into place and you'll notice that i'm using my athena lady jane drill to screw this tree into place it's so much fun. We're still taking pre-orders. We've already placed our first order and we have a limited amount left. So make sure you snag it before we, they're gone because once we sell out, it's gonna be a little bit more time before we can restock. So order it today. Thank you to all of you who have supported it. Again, this is a pre-order, so it will be coming a little bit later on. But yeah, snag it before we're out. I hope you love it as much as I do. Now there's two ways you could do this. You could leave it like this, go put it in your pot, put some dirt over the top of it. I mean, 
it would probably be okay through the winter. So that's just one way to do it and make it look like you potted them into your planters out in your front pot. What I thought would be cute because I did have that one tree when we first went in on the shopping tree that was wrapped in the burlap and stuck in a basket. I was like, that was really cute. So what I thought we would do is I went and bought some burlap at Hobby Lobby. You're gonna need about one yard per tree and you, just put it underneath your wood base and then I just took some shopping bags and stuck them in there. I figured those would be fine to kind of puff it out. I didn't have to spend any money. It would be fine getting rained on or whatever kind of weather happens on it. It would be okay. Then we took our burlap and kind of wrapped it up and cinched it around the base like like we saw on the inspiration one. And then I took the twine that actually came with a tree that kind of bound it all together when we first pulled it out of the box and reused that to tie our burlap on to our tree. And you could honestly leave it like this put it around your house. It looks really, really cute. What I wanted to do, as I mentioned, is we are gonna take this outside. So what I had going on was some giant pumpkins that I did in my fall hack video um, that I had placed on my planters because there was no flowers in it. They could be alive, but I would kill it and that's why there was nothing in there. <laughs> so rather than planting it up, I just used it as an opportunity to make a little fun statement. And I removed all of my fall decor and then all I needed to do was place our trees into the planter pots and that was it. These look like actual pine trees that were planted in pots. They are so adorable. Now you probably won't find a pine tree of this breed in Florida, but it really ups the ante of like the winter vibe. Now, of course, I switched out the wreath to one that I had done in my last year's holiday hacks video. Now I may add stuff to this as we get further along into the season. It would look really cute with the twinkle lights on it. I think it would look cute to do some more stuff on the porch. As for now, I think this is a really like classy look on my front porch. Now the pots, <laughs> these pots, uh, they're the plastic pots and I always like to do the WD-40 and it will last about a season. So like it will last about three months with the WD-40, so it's been that. <laughs> I think I might try the like the wax. A lot of you suggested using like furniture wax on them to keep them looking fresh a little bit longer. So I'm gonna try that for this episode. I didn't get that done, but I love this look. I think it's so adorable, beautiful, classy, and I am really excited about the direction of my front porch with this little addition. So easy, was it not? Oh my word, I have to share with you really quick what I just got in the mail because I'm so super excited. Does anybody know what this is? Okay, so if you watch XO McKenna, when I saw that she launched her jewelry line, she also launched these beautiful rose dishes that are made out of marble and I got mine and it is stunning. I am so excited about it. I just wanted to give her a little shout out because I know how hard it is to launch a product and I want to support her and let you know if you don't know about it, go check it out. Beautiful collection and I'm so happy for her. Okay, so on our shopping trip, I found those beautiful super soft fur pillows and I wanted to do kind of a little vignette with that. And I'm always buying pillow covers at Ikea because they're so affordable and I feel like there's a lot of flexibility in what you can do with it. So I'm gonna do a couple of pillow hacks now. I'm gonna be using four different pillow covers that I got at Ikea, some last year and some on this shopping trip. To go with this kind of brownie taupe-ish color fur pillow, I had left over kind of a like bronzy colored velvet pillow that was left over from a room makeover for my son's bedroom. I was gonna use two. I think I only ended up using one and I was inspired by this. I just found this at um, Home Goods and it's this wood Christmas tree that has this glittery silver backdrop with rows of pearls. Isn't that super, super pretty? Do you see that? This is 
my inspiration. So I went, and this is not sponsored by Cricut, but I went on to Cricut Design Studio and found a similar-ish looking tree and I cut it out in glitter heat transfer vinyl. Then I pressed that on to the pillow. Now you could skip this step because we do add layers to it, but I really do feel like the glitter backdrop really pops and it looks so good in the end. So then I had these pearl beads that I got at the Dollar tree I was just kind of trying to make something from stuff that I had um, I didn't have enough to do like rows upon rows of them like this but I did have some that was kind of similar that had pearls on it and was wrapped in um, like rhinestones faux rhinestones and these are like like almost stickers so bear with me they were not meant to stick on a pillow so you are going to need to use I used some super glue is what I used. so I started by doing the plain pearl beads on the outer rim of the Christmas tree using some super glue to hold those in place and then I took the other variety that I had plenty of that wasn't quite exact to this Christmas tree but I went ahead with it and I glued those on on the inside and the end result was so so pretty so we stuffed a pillow into that and now this is just a little side note if you don't want to remove all of your pillow covers you can just if, if they're opaque like mine was you can just leave the cover on and stuff them in and then you just have a couple layers of pillow covers and that's okay um, if you have something that's a little lighter in color like the one that's about to come then you may want to remove the pillow cover because you can maybe see through it I just love how this turned out it is so elegant, so pretty. It was not complicated at all. And I love this look. It's super luxurious. Now this one is kind of a really formal look. My next one is gonna be a little bit more casual. So you'll have to let me know when you see both of them, which version you would prefer. So for this next hack, it's gonna be so super simple. I started out, I don't remember which pillow it is. It was kind of one of their linen look ones. Um, I was in my stash. I slaughter their names anyway, so <laughs> it's probably fine that I don't remember. So you're looking for like a linen look pillow, whether you get that at Ikea or you get it at Hobby Lobby or you order something off of Amazon, that's what you're gonna start with. Then I've done the hard work for you and I have designed you a free printable and it comes in two pieces and it's of a poinsettia. So you're gonna print it out on this Hippo um, printable vinyl, heat transfer vinyl. I will link the product that I use in the description box below to make it simple for you. But you're gonna print it out and it's not gonna look this saturated. So I don't want you to like get all worried that like you've messed it up or your ink's out. Every time I see it, I'm like, wow, that's way too light. But I just go with it. So you're gonna cut that out. This one side you're gonna have like cut all the way close up to the edge. And you're gonna leave a little tiny Tiny bit of white maybe like a quarter of an inch just so you have something to overlap it on a little bit as far as I know you need an inkjet printer to print it and then all you need is a regular iron make sure you pre press your pillow cover so it's nice and smooth and then when you are ready to do your heat transfer vinyl you are going to um, put it on the dry setting then you're going to find center and then you're going to very carefully peel off the backing of this and it's going to try to curl and you're just going to smooth it out the best you can then you're going to take some parchment paper and you're going to cover up your your printable image with this because you don't want it melting on your iron or anything like that that acts as a barrier and you are going to put it on the hottest setting and you're going to press it down i'm not exactly sure on the time i believe it's about 30 seconds to a minute but you just want to make sure that it is fully adhered and i just do the one side and then we're going to take the one that goes on top of that little white strip one place that on and smooth it out make sure you line it up really really close and then you set your paper back on top of it, make sure everything's still aligned, and then you press that down really, really good, repeating the process, and that is it. <laughs> so just make sure it's on there really, really good. You don't wanna see any edges kind of curling up. You want it to feel like it's kind of like melted in the pillow. Um, you don't wanna scorch it. So that 
this helps to protect from scorching and it also really helps to protect your protect your iron as well then just put it in your pillow i like um, feather pillows but you can put it in a regular pillow and and then I paired it with this red velvet one that I got from Ikea last year. And the two of them look so adorable together. This is very much a, like a traditional Christmas reds and greens with the poinsettia and all of that. I love this little poinsettia linen pillow. You can't even tell that you pressed it on. You know, it's not obvious at all. It looks really high quality, beautiful you made it in a matter of minutes because all you had to do was print and press and that's it. Oh, and by the way, you can get the printable on my website for free. I will link everything in the description box below the video. So if you're looking for any of the printables, that's where you're gonna find them, click on them. And it's just my little gift to you. Okay, so for this next Ikea hack, I got one of the, the I should probably know. I'm gonna just post a picture of it on the screen right now so you know which one it is because I don't remember the name of it but essentially it was kind of like a canvas like hanging card holder it was very contemporary looking and you can notice that Dolly was really inspecting my work on this she was inspecting my work earlier she was letting me know she really liked it because she kept giving me kisses all the way through the, this DIY as well as the other uh, tree DIY she she just loves her mommy and she was she approved of the project she loved them <laughs> and so this is simple just take it out of the box and then I bought some of their $2.99 garland at Ikea I bought four of them I only ended up using three of them I mean I could have easily used the fourth one and just made it a lot more full you can use pipe cleaners to twist it on you can use the kind of the Christmas like twister ties the ones that look like a pine needle you can get them at the Dollar Tree or you can even just use the branches and you just kind of twist that around the canvas and we're just basically lining the outside of the tree and each one of the wood slats with the green garland that looks like a pine tree so we're getting rid of like the contemporary look and giving it more of a traditional Christmas tree look so like I said, you could really go all out and really fluff it up, especially like on the outside. And then, yeah, just everywhere, just fluff it up even more than I did. You could add twink lights. You could just really embellish it with some ribbon and really go all in. This is more like to give you a concept of how to do it. This is the most adorable little card holder that you could find. It has like a little ledge where you can put all of your Christmas cards. And it's just a super adorable way to display the Christmas cards as well as make a decor statement in your home during this holiday season. But I have to tell you, like, are you still sending out Christmas cards? Like, is that a tradition you're still doing? I know that I still get some from people every year and I love to get them. I am terrible about sending them out. I'm, I'm the worst. I'm like the one that does like, like a Christmas Eve. This is what we did this year post. We love you. Uh, I kind of do better at that, but let me know. Is that something you're still doing? Is there, are you sending out Christmas cards with pictures and like an update on your life and all of that? Anyways, let me know what you think of this DIY. Okay, so for this next Ikea hack, I am going to be working with a product that I've never used before, and it was a lot of fun, I'm gonna be honest with you. So first of all, I found these really adorable, um, like, it's like, I think it's like a bowl and a dish. I don't know if it's meant for soup. It's so cute on its own. I think this by itself is adorable. It would look really cute on a, like a Christmas table setting because look at that like little green tint. So here was my idea is I wanted to combine this plate with that and create like a pedestal um, plate. And so you could do it just like that. And here's how we do it. I have created a printable for you that, and it gives you two options. You can do the poinsettia that we used on the pillow and you're repeating that look. Or I, I thought it would be really cute to do like a holly and berry look. So there's those two options on this. And this is the kit. This is what the kit looks like. It's made by Silhouette. It only comes with two sheets. So I don't know if it's like the 
best, best deal. I would like to try to figure out how to hack this because I feel like it's like photo paper and like transfer paper. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out like a way to hack this idea. I don't know. We'll see if it works. Um, but yeah, it's tattoo paper. Isn't that fun? And so you just print them out and all you need to do is print it out on the shiny side of the paper and then let it sit for a couple minutes for the ink to dry. And when you use this product, you're gonna wanna make sure you reverse the image, which I've already done on this printable because it you're gonna be putting it on reverse, if that makes sense. So I, on mine, I decided to use the Holly and Berry wreath. I just thought that that would look really cute. And all you do is you cut it out kind of close. It doesn't need to be like perfect, um, but then you, so you cut it out and you peel back the backing and it will be on the photo paper and there will be now a sticky substance on it. So I don't know if I'll be able to hack this or not because I, I just don't know how it will work. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then you put it face down on the plate and then you get it a little wet cloth like you would like a normal temporary tattoo. You get the backing wet and then you peel it back and it stays there. And it looked really cute. I was like, this is super, super cool. And so I just left it like that. So I get these epoxy kits from Dollar Tree. I like them because they're kind of like a one-time, it's a small little amount, it's one-time use, you mix it and throw it away. You don't have to worry about measuring. There's like, it's no muss, no fuss, easy, easy, easy. So you mix it up once it's fully combined and it's a really fast setting, you, then you take your, your bowl and you take your popsicle stick and kind of wipe it on and then you place your plate on top. If you wanted to, you could take like a matte sealer and spray it on. I figured this will be fine for my purposes and I haven't tried it out yet, but I was like, well, maybe I could wash it off and then it would be plain and I could use it in my everyday decor or maybe it's something that I could switch out by the season if I wanted to. So I did not seal it. This is not food safe. So if you want to display something on it, I would like maybe do something like a cupcake and, and all of that and know that when you wash it, there's a good chance that the temporary tattoo will eventually come off. If you didn't want to use the, the tattoo paper, you could still do this and do like a Mod Podge, if, especially if you're not using it for food anyways. So there's that as an option as well. And then I did the little ones here, you'll notice, because I thought it would be really fun. You could do it around the base of the bowl if you wanted to, to add even more. I kept it simple with that. Or you could just print them out, put them on your arm. <laughs> I don't, I'm a little old for temporary tattoos, but there you go. It'd be fun for like your kids or your grandkids or whatnot, so, and festive. So there you go, really cool product. I, I, I do have to say there's probably a lot of possibilities with this product. I would like to come up with a really cool hack on how to do this. If any of you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comment section below, but I am really impressed and my, my wheels are spinning with all the ideas of what you could do with tattoo paper and home decor. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. So next up is the little white towel that I picked up on our shopping trip. It was so inexpensive. I don't even remember what it was. It was like a dollar or two. So it was just a simple hand towel and I, had seen this ribbon, I'm gonna show you it, at Hobby Lobby recently. And so there's this one with the holly and berries and it was on sale for 250 for 15 feet. And then they also have one with snowflakes. And I'm like, that would be such a fun little embellishment on like a tea towel or, you know, a hand towel of some sort. So you could stitch this on and I'm a huge advocate for sewing, but I didn't want to take the time and not everybody has a sewing machine to stitch around each one of these little leaves. I thought it would be okay to use some fabric glue this time around. So I cut off just the right amount of this and use some fabric glue to glue it down into place and let it fully dry and that is it. And so like I said, you could just, you don't even need IKEA for this one because you could go get a towel anywhere and get some of this fun little ribbon that they have at Hobby Lobby. There's a lot more Hobby Lobbies out there than there are Ikeas and just glue on to the towel. I did it at the middle. You could really add several layers of it because there was a lot of lines and there was a lot of distance. 
I could have done a couple rows of it and it would look really, really cute, but I, I figured it out. It was about like 17 cents worth of, of this, you know, garland thing on there. So there's a lot of possibilities with this. And I just thought that was a super, super easy Ikea hack that you could use on any towel from anywhere. So I really hope you enjoyed the idea and it got your wheels spinning to come up with something else. You could put it on like a red towel. You could put it on, anyway, a lot of options. And I hope you enjoyed that project. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY goddesses out there, you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.